This video will cover part two of the axial skeleton. As we go, we'll cover the following study objectives, identify and list the features of the facial bones and hyoid bone, and list the bones that form the orbital complex. Here we can see a lateral view of the skull, and we can see that the brain case surrounding the brain is made from the eight cranial bones, and then attached to the cranium on the anterior are the facial bones. There are 14 facial bones, and there is a mnemonic device that you can use to help remember the 14 names of the facial bones. That is, Virgil cannot make my pet zebra laugh. The first letter from each of those names is the first letter for a bone. So V for Virgil stands for Vomer. The Vomer is found at the inferior of the nasal septum. It's a plow-shaped bone. C, Virgil can, C stands for concha of inferior nasal concha. So remember that we had middle nasal concha and superior nasal concha of the ethmoid bone. So those are parts of a cranial bone. The inferior nasal concha is a facial bone and there are left and right. So there are two inferior nasal concha but only one vomer. So the next word, Virgil cannot, N stands for nasal. There's two nasal bones found at the bridge, just superior to the nasal cavity. These are small flat bones. Next is M. Virgil cannot make. M stands for maxilla. There are two maxillae, two maxillary bones that are the upper jaw bones. So this is the right side that's being pointed at here, the right maxilla there, and then here's the left maxilla. The next letter is another M. Virgil cannot make my, and there's a mandible for the lower jaw. That's just one bone. Virgil cannot make my pet. So P is the next letter. P stands for palatine bone. There are two palatine bones. They form the posterior third of the hard palate in the roof of the mouth and are also part of the orbital complex. The region that we can see right here is just a very small process of the palatine bone that extends into the floor of the orbit. Virgil cannot make my pet zebra. Z for zygomatic bone, and there are two zygomatic bones. These are the cheekbones. Virgil cannot make my pet zebra laugh. L stands for lacrimal, and there are two lacrimal bones found in the medial orbit. 
Here we see an illustration of the right maxilla. The maxilla is a medium-sized irregular bone that forms the upper jaw and the medial margin of the orbit. This portion that forms the medial margin of the orbit articulates with the frontal bone is known as the frontal process of the maxilla. So the frontal process of the maxilla is the extension of bone that is found on the medial side of the orbit and articulates with the frontal bone. Just inferior to the orbit is an infraorbital foramen. Infraorbital foramen contains a nerve, the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve, which carries sen sensory information from the upper jaw. You can see the alveolar processes here. The alveolar processes are these ridges of bone supporting the teeth, surrounding the teeth. Remember the word alveolus for air sac or the alveolar sac shaped secretory unit of a multicellular exocrine gland. The alveolus of a jawbone is the socket, the little sac shape where the tooth is found. And the alveolar process is this ridge of bone on the exterior, on the exterior of the bone just surrounding the alveolus for the tooth. There is a zygomatic process, a region on the lateral portion of the maxilla that articulates with the zygomatic bone. There's also a palatine or palatal process that forms the anterior two-thirds of the hard palate. And we'll see another view that shows that better, but extending posterior from the teeth is a process of bone forming the roof of the mouth, that is the two-thirds on the anterior of the hard palate known as the palatine process of the maxilla. Here we see an illustration of the mandible. The mandible is a medium sized irregular shaped bone that forms the lower jaw. The major region where the teeth are found and the it's located in the mental region is the body of the mandible. There's also a ramus of the mandible that extends from the body at the mandibular angle and the ramus extends superior. On the body of the mandible there are alveolar processes, ridges surrounding the teeth, there's also a mental foramen. The mental foramen of the mandible. There are two mental foramina, actually, on one on the left and one on the right. And the mental foramen contains a division of the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve, important for carrying sensory information from the lower jaw. On the ramus of the mandible, we can see the mandibular condyle, also known as the condylar process of the mandible, which articulates with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. So we can see right here, this forms the, the joint of the jaw, the temporal mandibular joint, the only mobile joint of the skull. There's another 
process here, the coronoid process. So the coronoid process is located anterior to the condylar process and the smooth surface in between that concave surface is a notch, the mandibular notch. The coronoid process, coronoid literally means crown shaped. I'm not sure it really looks like a crown to me, but the coronoid process is the point of insertion for an important muscle, the temporalis muscle that is a muscle found covering the temporal bone and comes down onto the coronoid process, inserts on the coronoid process in order to elevate the mandible to close the jaw. There's also a mandibular foramen on the ramus. The mandibular foramen is on the medial surface of the ramus. The mandibular foramen also contains the mandibular branch of trigeminal nerve carrying sensory information from the lower jaw. The mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve also excites the muscles of mastication like temporalis. Here we see a mid-sagittal view of the skull the palatine bones and the palatine process of the maxilla can be seen with this view. So the palatine bone forms the posterior one-third of the hard palate. And then here is the maxillary process, the, the palatine process of the maxilla that forms the anterior two-thirds of the hard palate. So the maxilla has a palatine process, this region on the anterior of the roof of the mouth, and the palatine bone forms the posterior third of the hard palate. Here's an illustration showing the nasal septum, just superior to the palatine process of the maxilla, is the vomer bone forming the inferior part of the nasal septum, and the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone forming the superior portion of the nasal septum. And then on the anterior, there is septal cartilage, that is hyaline cartilage, forming the most anterior portion of the nasal septum that forms a separation between the left and the right half of the nasal cavity. Here we have a lateral wall of the nasal cavity illustration showing the nasal concha, the scroll-shaped ridges of bone that extend into the nasal cavity, the superior nasal concha and middle nasal concha are part of ethmoid bone, and inferior nasal concha is a facial bone. Here we can see the hyoid bone. The hyoid bone is a small, irregular, horseshoe-shaped bone located inferior to the mandible. The hyoid has no bony joints, so this is a unique feature of the hyoid bone. It's held in place by muscles and tendons, but doesn't form any bony joints. There are muscles that attach to the hyoid bone that are important for moving the tongue. An example would be hyoglossus. 
Its origin is on the hyoid bone and inserts into the tongue to move the tongue. There are other muscles that attach from the hyoid bone into the larynx and pharynx. The voice box is the larynx and the pharynx is the region of the throat superior to the esophagus and larynx. So these muscles are important for swallowing and stabilizing the hyoid bone. Here we see a view of the orbital complex, the frontal, sphenoid, ethmoid, zygomatic, maxilla, palatine, and lacrimal bones form the orbital complex. That's seven bones in total form the orbital complex. So here we see the zygomatic bone, an irregular shaped bone that forms the, the cheek. The zygomatic arch is the arch of the cheek in the buccal region. And the zygomatic bone is found on the lateral margin of the orbit here. There's a temporal process of the zygomatic bone here that extends to form the zygomatic arch by articulating with the zygomatic process of the temporal bone this is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. The lacrimal bone is found in the medial margin of the orbit. This is the smallest bone of the face. It's a, a flat bone, and there's, you can see the lacrimal fossa here is part of a, a groove shape. The lacrimal groove in between the frontal process of the maxilla and the lacrimal fossa here is a lacrimal groove. where the nasolacrimal sac is located that drains tears into the nasal cavity. We can see the supraorbital margin of the frontal bone here. and the supraorbital foramen. And then the posterior wall of the orbit contains a large part of the sphenoid bone. You can see the superior orbital fissure here in between. the greater and lesser wings of the sphenoid. So here's a greater wing of the sphenoid here. And the lesser wing up here. And then the optic canal travels through the sphenoid bone carrying the optic nerve the optic nerve is the nerve that relays the sense of vision into the brain. There's a small portion of ethmoid bone found just medial to the optic canal. And then the maxilla forms the 
medial and inferior margin of the orbit. The maxilla extends up this frontal process to form the medial margin of the orbit that articulates with the frontal bone.